There he is, the former up, Strike Force light heavyweight champ, former NC2A All American, former representative of the United States in international wrestling, current American top team wrestling coach, King Mo. What up, man? What's going on, man? What's going on? You uh, you getting a foot massage or what? You're just sprawled out on that bed, aren't you? Man, I'm chilling, man. I'm I'm, a, I'm here in the bubble, so you know I can't go nowhere. But on property or the, I can see I'm in the hotel. I can go to the PI when they go, and I can go to Whole Foods when they do the Whole Foods runs. But other than that, I'm stuck in this room. Is there a gym? A uh, nah, not really. Is there? They're private rooms that we can work out in. You know, what I'm saying that's about it. So what are you doing uh, when you're not either, you know, breaking a sweat with Jarzinho or some of the other athletes that you've been cornering? What, what are, you, are you catching up on Netflix or sleeping a lot or what? Man, I'm just trying to – honestly, like nothing watching TV, you know what I'm saying, uh, or doing research on my bees because, you know, I got honeybees now. I'm a black beekeeper, you know, so I'm, I'm trying to learn about bees and stuff like that. Just trying to kill time, man, because – during this pandemic, man, like everything's kind of slowed, every, everything's slowed down. So I'm trying to find ways to stay busy. That's about it. You hitting up that room service? How much weight have you have you gained since you stopped fighting? What what used to be your walk around weight? Like two hundred three or something like that back in the day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you know? Uh, about two hundred three, two hundred four, that or, or less. Stop it, Mo. Stop, Stop it. Dead serious. Really? Mm hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, my weight, my like right now, because the angle, my face in the facial hair might look a little heavier. But it, it looked like your chest had sank and your belly was rising. That's all. Nah, but nah, yeah, nah, it was nah, probably I'm, the angle. I'm, I'm, I'm literally, I'm literally probably heavy for me. It's like if I'm if I'm two o three right now, that's heavy for me. For the most part, I'm anywhere from one ninety five to two o two o three two o two. So no man boobs or nothing. Nope, I stay swole. I stay man. Look, I stay in shape. Granted, like. <laughs> Look, I can't get out of shape. I got I got some killers that that need to be trained, so I can't be uh, out of shape and try to help them. It doesn't work like that. Hmm. All right. Um. How are you liking now being a full time coach? You've been retired now a, a couple of years, I guess, eighteen months. How are you yeah, liking yeah. it? Was it a smooth transition? Yeah, pretty much. Because I was coaching while I was still still kind of fighting. You know what I'm saying? Um. I, I enjoy it. You know, I I, I enjoy watching the progress. Of a, of a lot of these athletes, everything not not just skill wise, but some of the fighters that we have come to the gym, <laughs> they come not knowing a lick of English, and I just watch them grow. I watch them watch the comments grow. I watch their skill set grow. Uh, I, it, it's 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 like watching an uh, an infant, a newborn. You know, when when they first come to the gym, they're like a like a, a ball of clay, and then they have a bunch of different coaches at the gym that help to help mold them, and then once. We help help them. They do their own thing, you know. They figure I mean, they can choose what they want to do and everything. So yeah, I, I enjoy doing this, man. It's fun. Give me the name of somebody who's got thick skin, so that if they hear this, they're not offended. But what I want to know is somebody that wasn't good at wrestling and now is pretty damn good. But in reality, I'm shielding it. I actually really mean somebody that sucked at wrestling and now can get their wrestle on. Man, look, look, my boy Victor Victor Belfort, aka Santiago Ponzinibbio. That boy couldn't wrestle to save his life. Now he's a killer. Dustin, the diamond, Poirier, could not wrestle. Man, look, I'm going to tell you all something. I remember when Dustin Poirier was at 145 trying to make that transition to 155. <laughs> he don't want to tell you all this, but that boy was so weak. Man, I watched him struggle to do 95 pounds on the bench press. Struggling, legs kicking. And it was so funny. I would, I, When Dustin's working out, I'd be like, you know what? I'm gonna do my sets fast so I can watch Dustin's weak ass struggle. <laughs> but Dustin, <laughs> man, look, yo, it man, it was so bad, man. I, I watched him struggle doing 115 on squats. But let me tell you something. Like within like three months, I watched Dustin repping 185. Like he actually like enjoyed it. At first he hated it because everybody was so much stronger than him and he was a, he was weak. Like, you know, but then do the hard work and the dedication and, and just just be be consistent. Man, he look at him now, and that's one thing about American Top Team that I enjoy seeing. I I enjoy seeing people come from the mud and then become a diamond or a phoenix. There you go. And and was Dustin's wrestling was it was it uh 
a, a challenge at first and now would you say that you know he's he's made progress as he, as he worked directly with you or you yeah, just watched him from afar he has, he's he hasn't really worked with me but he's worked with like you know he had a guy um cammy before coach cammy barzini before he left coach mike brown who's like been you know mike best is my mike brown and, and dustin coach brown's like he's a man that boy's legit man that coach that coach he's a man he's highly underrated i feel like he should get more praise um he's a genius in this game I, everybody he works with from Kyoji to amanda to dustin everybody they're they're all killers and well-rounded so you know my hats you know shout out to mike brown shout out to the att coaching staff man i think we're the best coaching staff in the world well, Mike Brown, I think, has won a, a World MMA Award, so he's definitely gotten uh, some praise. But we know exactly what you're saying. You know, the sad thing is, Mo, a lot of times people don't even remember that he was a WEC featherweight champ. Yeah, yeah let me, let me, hey, and Mike is still whoops some ass. I see him in, look, look, Mike is in the gym. You'll find him some days where MMA gloves waiting for somebody to have a partner. Like, he'll go in there with anybody and just, just grapple, you know, spar. He's always in shape. That's one thing you can say about ATT. All the coaches are a gym. We're 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 ready to go. If someone doesn't have a partner, we're ready to jump in there. Steve Mako is an animal. I know a lot of heavyweights that don't want to see him. Steve Mako hasn't competed in, in years. So like I don't know. We have a some killers. We have Anderson. Um, he's a kickboxer coach. Coach Cattell, Coach Macahal, Coach Bahumpa, Coach Ielton. Man, um, also a uh, uh, Coach Gabriel for a new boxing coach. Uh, Daya Davis. Man, we're Coach, coach, uh, coach, uh, Conan, we're rolling deep out there, man. So if, it, hey, anybody out there that needs some like more top notch coaches and you're a good fighter or you want to get better, hey, man, just hit up, hit up American Top Team. I'm telling you, you can make it happen. You guys still want to grow? It seemed like at some point you topped out, maybe when well, you got well, there. Well, I'm just saying, like, hey, I'm not saying I'm to the people. I'm saying maybe if you contact American Top Team and you can get through the rigorous, you know, when they pick, they pick out, you know, the, I don't know how you say it, but put it like this, you have to come try out. You have to be able, you have to be able to fit the mold. You know what I'm saying? So if, if you call them and you reach, reach out, talk to them and you give them their stats and give them your information, they like it. Guess what? You might be there. You know, you might be able to come. I'm I'm I I'm not the end all be all. You talk to um, Richie, um, Coach Richie, um, and Coach Conan and and Dan Lambert. Those are the guys. You know, I'm just a coach. I I have no pool like that. You know. <laughs> all right. Um. Let's get into these bees. What the hell are you doing? You, your ass is going to get stung. Or you're not allergic in any way, are you? No, nah, I found out just um, like two weeks ago. I got stung. I got lit up. My <laughs> mouth, my nose, my neck. Man, I had my, my my suit on wrong, right? And I didn't know you had to zip the front. Man, I, I went to lift up my bee box because I wanted to raise it up higher. So I, as I picked it up, the bottom fell out, and I was barefooted. Boy, I got destroyed. I don't know what was I thinking. Like, why would I be out there barefooted with some bees? Uh, I thought that I'd be slick, you know. What I'm I, you know, I was like, you know what? I don't need shoes for this. I'm pretty sure the box is sturdy. I could pick it up, put it down, then then add some blocks on it, then pick put it back on top of the box. I mean, on the blocks. And when I when I went to go pick it up to put it on top of the the box, the bottom fell out all on my feet. And boy, I was like, okay, stay calm. I was getting destroyed. I put the box down, went to run. I look, I look down. I see their bees in my beekeeper suit, just destroying my face and neck. Ah, oh, man! But you so know what? You do? How do you get I out of it? I got stung. I took the suit off and just got, you know, got stung. But they say bee venom is actually good for arthritis. And I tell you this, I have been feeling sore since then. I, you know, I don't know what it is. Maybe the placebo effect. But you know what? Like, I guess bee venom has some. Some good properties, man. Straight up. Most people that get bees in their house, they call a beekeeper or somebody to get rid of them. Why did you bring them into your house? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I got a, you know, I got a little garden in the back. I'm turning my pool into a pond. And you know what? I was like, you know what? I'm just going to try to be more self-sufficient. I, I had a friend named Gary Russell. He's a boxer. He hit me up. And Gary was like, Mo, man, what are you up to? I was like, I'm just chilling. He's like, yeah, man, I got acres. I hunt. I do this. And I'm like, why? Let's go to the grocery store. He's like, well, if things go bad, what are you going to do? And I was like, you know what? You're right. I got a little garden. I, I can grow food. So I just I started thinking sometimes, like, you know, I'm going to take it back to the caveman days, hunters and gatherings. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna do that for a little bit, see how I do. So I got my I got a setup in my backyard. I got my got a little pond going, I could fish, boom. And I got some fruits and vegetables and everything growing. So hey, I ain't gotta go to the grocery store. I can stay COVID free at my house. You can I, fish in your backyard. You have a pond that big? I'm going to, yeah, I'm, I'm setting that up. It's a little, I'm turning my, my actual pool into a freshwater pond. <laughs> <laughs> I don't you swear. Like, you're going to be fishing from your, like, diving board? Just feet hanging on? Yeah, pretty much. You're pretty much, look, I don't swim. So I'm like, what am I using this pool for? I'm like, you know what? I'm I, I'm in Florida. You know, I'm just going to buy. I'm a, I talked to my pool guy. I was like, look, just clean my pool, but with no chemicals. I'm going to buy some stockfish, some daphnia, some crawfish. I'm gonna throw it in there. That, that I'm just gonna stock it with some like tilapia or some uh, some bass or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Just to so when I'm bored, if I'm bored, I don't feel like going to the grocery store or I don't feel like order McDonald's. You know what I can do? Just hop up, go in the backyard. You know what I'm saying? Go fishing. Give me some tomatoes. Give me some Barbados cherries and just eat good. Wow. Um, are you sure you're all right? You, you didn't take one too many shots or whatever? Like, I, I'm trying to man, process look, this. Nah, you know what it is, is man, when, when when COVID hit, I was just watching TV. So, you know, my shows, Cobra Kai, I already killed it. Um, <laughs> the boys killed that. I was watching everything. So I was like, man, I am watching everything on TV I could watch. I watched CNN so much that I, look, I can't, I love CNN. But it got to the point where I find myself waking up at five in the morning to watch you CNN, then I, then I work out, go to the gym, come back home, watch more CNN because because I watched everything. So then I was like, you know what? Forget watching CNN. What man? You know what? I'm gonna find a new hobby. I went in the backyard. I was like, you know what? I might. I got all these plants. Bees help pollinate. You know what? I'm gonna get some bees. That that just did research on bees. I called a guy up from the local beekeepers association. Linked up with them. Shadowed them for about two weeks. And we went, we went, and, you know, um, studied some Africanized honeybee hives and everything. And after that, I felt like I knew enough, so I just bought a little beehive, and I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna catch two more. I bought one, now I'm gonna catch two wild swarms, and I'm gonna produce some honey, man. That scared <laughs> me a little bit. The Africanized, I, th I thought there was a some problem with the Africanized bees or something man, like that. Yeah, all Florida, South Florida, where I'm at, most of the bees have Africanized genes. So they kill the bees, you know what I'm saying? So it is what it is, but they produce honey and they also have a, they do, um, bees have a, have um pest, a pest thing called the uh, varroa, varroa mites. And Africanized bees do the best um, at fighting those off, you know, not getting killed by varroa mites. So that's right. That's another good reason for getting Africanized bees as well as they produce a little more honey, but they're more aggressive. What about your kids? Um, do they have to go in the backyard with a astronaut suit, a beekeeper suit, or, or do nah, 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 nah. How's that work? Nah, nah, because nah, nah, they don't live with me, right? So, so I ain't got to worry about none of that. I just got to worry about me and my bees. I got to worry about like, like um, lizards, because I, I see some lizards and some birds, but my hives eat my bees. I'm not feeling that, so I'm gonna have to do something about that. I need some honey. Yeah. You're gonna go down the road of a snake soon, huh? Nah, no, nah, never, no, no. Look, Florida's full of pythons and all that stuff. I'm anything that can kill you, I'm not messing with. The bees can't kill you, but I got a little, I got a little um, nursery. So if I'm getting stung, like I can run in the nursery and like shake the bees off. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, man. Could, couldn't I say the same thing that you said to Gary Russell? Like, man, just go to Trader Joe's or 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 Whole Foods and grab your fruit there. All this getting stung, and now the lizards are coming and the birds are coming. Like. Seems like it's just starting to, you know, cycle off and grow. Well, and well, maybe grow I can't get COVID in my backyard. I cannot get COVID at home. You can't get stung look, at Trader Joe's. Hey, but but guess what? Bee venom's okay. They said, man, look, look it up. They said beekeepers live long, and I think it might be because the bee hunt, the the bee venom, I'm telling you, or the pro the propolis. Trust me, when I start harvesting stuff, I'm gonna send y'all. Some 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 royal so jelly. Right now you're sitting there going, man, I wish I was back there getting stung. That way I could feel good with my arthritis. You know you <laughs> hope you don't get stung again. Look, look, like, look. If I have to get stung, they say, look. I don't want to get stung, but they said bee stings are good for you. So you know what? If I get stung here and there, it's just helping me live longer. 
That's how I see it. How many times did you get stung that day? <sighs> Man, my face, my nose, my neck, um, on my head, all my legs, all of my feet, probably about 15 times. Oh, wow. You got pictures? No, no, no. I should next time. Next, you know what I'm gonna start doing? I'm gonna start video my like recording myself, inspecting my hive. So when I come back after inspect my hive for um, I, first I got I gotta t test them for hive beetles and wax moths and varroa mites. So I have to go through my hive and inspect it and put traps down. And I know I'm gonna get stung like a mug. I know I will. Wow. You're gonna wear shoes this time, right? Yeah, I'm wearing. I mean, yeah, I'm wearing shoes, sweats. And the B suit. I'm wearing, I'm wearing I'm wearing it all, man. I'm not gonna be stupid. I'm gonna zip the front too. <laughs> hey, what'd you hey. think of this Bellator tournament that they announced? This Grand Prix. Um, mm -hmm. they came in with some heavy talent, huh? Man, some heavy hitters, man. Um, I like what Bellator is doing. I like what I'm seeing in combat sports, it's staying fresh. Um, that 205 tournament, I'm glad I'm not in it, man, because there's some killers in there. I'm old, Nim Cobb is a beast, Phil Davis is a beast. Bader's a beast. Um, that new kid, man, look at all of them. Number killers, man. So, you know, um, best best let to them all. Who do you, you know, think comes out of Romero and Johnson? Johnson? Ooh, Romero and Johnson. That's a tough one, man, because uh, my boy, Black Elvis, see, you know, Rumble Johnson, I know him as Black Elvis. I used to call him Black Elvis back in the day. He's a monster. And then you got Romero, who never ages. I think he's, he's like, he's like, what, five and over by the time? So, man, you know, it's going to be an interesting fight right there, man. Um, Romero's quickness of speed and his power versus Phil Davis. I mean, not Phil Davis. Versus Rumble Johnson's size and aggressiveness and, and power. So, it's going to be – that's going to be a that's gonna be a nasty fight right there, man. Somebody's going to sleep comatose. You uh, you want to predict the winner? Or are you close with both guys? I'd rather not? What, what, what's the deal? Man, look. Look. The loser – is them gloves because I know they're gonna be fucked up. The winner are the fans because I I can't pre I can you know what I if I could tell you a winner I'd be like look y'all put all your money on this guy and go to the casinos and put put your money down. But you know what I can I'm not gonna do that. But I will tell you all all the men in that in that tournament are gonna be prepared. They're gonna be ready. Gonna Man, be back in the day. Ready. You would lick your chops to break down a fight, but this time you're you're kind of staying away. But that's fine. How about Machida and Bader? Now Machida beat Bader a while back uh, in the UFC when yeah. they were both light heavyweights. Machida then dabbled with middleweight. Bader dabbled with heavyweight. Well, more than dabbled, he became a champ. But now yeah. they're back at 205 for here. Do you have a prediction for this one? Can can Bader even the score? I well, I think maybe uh, um, Bader's talented, big, but here's the issue. Man, that dude got so big. I, I he's gonna be hard. He's gonna be a hard, have a hard time making two hundred five, man. Um, but Machida's slick. He's a little older. Um, not as big, but he has tricks up his sleeve, man. He's a he's a martial artist. Um, that one right there, I think the favorite's um Bader because he's younger and a little fresher. Um, but Machida can always do something, man. You know, he fought. I think he fought Phil Davis a while back. Um, I for, did he? I forgot who he fought recently, man. Because COVID, COVID has my mind up. Machida did fight Phil Davis, and Phil Davis yeah. beat him by split decision. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, and when when Phil when when Phil Davis fought Bader, close fight. So I I just think that man, um, that that whole tournament went pretty pretty. I don't know. It ain't no clear cut favorites. I favorite Nemcom because he's a champ. But anything can happen, man. Anything can happen. You think Nemkov gets past Davis in the first round? <sighs> See, is it a five round fight? Because yeah. it's a five round yeah, fight. The titles oh, at man. stake. Man, see, I don't know. Um, Nemkov's a beast. He has better stand up. But when I saw him and Davis fight, one thing I saw was Nemkov kind of faded in the third round. But from what I've seen, it seems like Nemkov has the um, cardio issues underhand you know, and in, in control. So I don't know. I think I think we'll see a more aggressive. Uh, um, Phil Davis, and I think we'll see a more confident Nemkov. Let me veer off for something, just and hopefully yeah. you can answer this, but I'm not sure. You remember when Valentina fought Amanda the first time, and mm -hmm. Amanda was fading, and mm -hmm. so that little label kind of followed her a little bit, you know. Whereas if the fight goes later in the round, in, in the in these, you know, when she's before she fought Misha and everything, people remembered that. 
So people would bring it up. But then Amanda started going five rounds and answered it. What do you think Amanda did? Were you there at American Top Team? What was it that she did that she was able to um, shed that label, not just by proving it, but by also um, training for it? Like, what, what, do you remember that, that, that time period? I remember that time period. Um, I think uh, there's a few things. I think, for one, <clears throat> she matured. Because I remember Amanda from Strike Force when she was like a baby still, but people don't remember she was so young, and she, but she was so, um, a, she was a monster back then, but she didn't have direction. I think um, um, over time she found her style, and Mike Brown and the, the rest of the coaching staff helped, helped clean some things up. And then the biggest thing was her confidence. She knows she knew she can go she can go five rounds need be because she had she'd done it before and now she's riding high she knows she's she's the the boss she's the queen you know what I'm saying and she knows that hey I'm ready man you know no one's gonna take this belt from me so she has a chip on her shoulder she's there to prove all the haters and all the doubters wrong she's ready I want to go back to training for a second Mo um, being a trainer you've experienced a lot of different camps in a lot of different cities. What's one thing from the Mayweather Boxing Club that you have always kept in your head that you use as a coach now today? Oh man, it's a lot of things, like, especially from Jeff. Like I'm um, just tech, um, technically and tech, technically, um, I don't know. It just it's hard to explain because every day I was in there, every day I, I went to the Mayweather gym, I learned something. It could be from boxing history, it could be from technique, or it could be things about myself. Because I was in there sparring Andrew Tabidi getting beat up. I was in there sparring Michael Hunter getting beat up. I sparred a lot of people. I spent a lot of time getting beat up in that gym. Yes, if I sparred MMA guys, I did good. But for the most part, I had to learn about boxing, combat, tactics. Because the thing is, MMA, the, the tactics and techniques are the, tactics are the same all around. But with in a, in a cage versus a ring, when you can't clinch, you have to find, have to find different ways to, to be active and and not and and not seem like you're passive, you know. You just it's it's just like small tricks, man. Like it's hard to explain. But when COVID ends, Wednesday is when I come back down. We'll link up. We'll do do a we'll we'll follow Jeff. We'll we'll shadow Jeff and uh, some of the guys from the Mayweather gym and even the Prince France boxing gym because I'm cool with all them people. We'll shadow them. You will get a chance to see how they work in their world. Deal. What about uh, Clarissa Shields? How do you think she's gonna do in mixed martial? Clarissa is a talent. Um, she's gonna be oh, she's gonna be hard to beat because the thing is, she's one to learn. She's not taking no shortcuts. She's being she's a lot more serious. Now remember when James Tony joined jumped to MMA years ago, I was talking to him. I was cool with him, and uh, he never really took it serious. He looked at MMA as a money grab. Like hey, you know what? I'm gonna jump in here get money. Which he, I, I don't blame him because he spent all his time making a name for himself in boxing. So, you know what? He was like, you know what? It's time to make money and grab this money in, in MMA and I'll be out. Well, Carissa's like, you know what? Mm-mm. I'm not here for the money. I'm here for the status. I'm here to show people I'm the greatest female fighter in the world. And uh, I'm gonna, y'all are still there? And, and, and that's what she's doing. She, she's like, I'm the greatest female combat fighter in the world. Um, boxing, who wants it? MMA, I'm coming. And she wants, she wants the gold, you know? And Anybody that's willing to do that, leave their sport and come to a whole different sport and learn about it and, and take the time and to be, and then be immersed in it shows that they're not playing no games and they're serious. They want to be they want to be a well-rounded fighter. And that's I respect her for that. She's learning kicks, throwing kicks, doing all that stuff. I see her talking with female wrestlers, Adeline Gray. Um, she she's she's serious about this. She's very serious about it. That type of mentality that she has, that work ethic, it reminds me a lot of Amanda Nunes. So what I want to ask you is, if Amanda decided to go the other way to boxing, could she be successful like that? Well, look, hell yeah. I'm going to tell you this, right? Amanda Nunes, Clarissa Shields, and Jude, um, Judo Kayla, Kayla Harrison, have the same mentality. Super, Even Cyborg. They're super competitive. Joanna, Joanna, we put it like this: all all the female fighters you see that are at the top of the game are very ultra competitive. And Amanda, you put Amanda in a boxing gym, she she'll be a world champion. Amanda ain't playing. If Amanda when it comes to combat game, want combat sports, Amanda is not playing. She'll she'll if she does it, she'll she'll jump in there and learn it to be the best. Just like Clarissa, 
just like you know Kayla, just like um uh, Valerie, just like Joanna, just like all the female fighters at ATT, all the female fighters you see in the top uh, worldwide, they're trying to be the best. They're ultra competitive. I saw that in Victor when I was when I was doing commentary for Invicta. The the ladies are vicious. They're not playing and they want they want they're there to make a name for themselves and make and, and let them know that hey, this is MMA. We do MMA just like you guys do. You know, I don't I'm done calling women say women MMA. It's MMA. Because women fight, men fight. It's MMA. It's all the same. It's not no WMMA. It's MMA. You're a guy that's fought over multiple weight classes, and I want to ask you a question about body type, especially when it comes to the heavyweight division. Um, we've seen that it's not always the biggest guy in the heavyweight division that has success. Some of the, the guys that have held the title for longer have been closer to the bottom than they were really at the top. A guy like John Jones that's going up to heavyweight, what do you think he should do with his frame? What advantages can he have, um, and, and what weight do you think he should fight at? All right, so let's do, let's let me let me go let me go back and let's go let's go back in time. So let's look, let's look at the heavyweight the heavyweight structure. Heavyweights came; they're big, they're fat, big, swole. Then fast forward, Ego Vachachin came. Then we had some more bigger heavyweights. Then we had Fedor, Randy Couture. I think that then after that we had Brock Lesnar. Then we had Kane. You know what I'm saying? I think then we had Daniel and so on. I think that right now it's it's just it's it's just um it it goes full circle. A big guy will be a small guy, but a small guy can be a big guy. John Jones is like in between both big and small, but he's long and lanky. Um, if if I were if I were John, I would just just his natural body weight. I'm gonna try to put out too much weight. I just come in your natural size, working your speed, which I'm pretty sure he's working on. Um, working on um, working on um being able to hold his ground because. The thing is, you want to get pushed around there and, and, and backed on the backed up on the cage and leaned on. Um, I think John will be successful. Um, he, he's gonna have to he's gonna have to find a way to keep make guys respect his power, make guys respect his takedown attempts, and make guys respect his kicks. I think that you'll see a more vicious John because John has to get the heavyweight respect to make them not want to come forward and walk him down. So I don't know. It, it's gonna be interesting to see what happens with John because if he fights Ngannou, that's a whole different animal. You know. And John is dangerous. He has power. What does John do? Does John wait and the first two rounds and play it safe and then come out strong the rounds three through five? Or does John like work a little bit and, and drain him and then come out strong again? But what do you do? John has to fight smart because now one punch could change the could change one punch, one kick, one takedown, just one underhook could change the fight. Let's finish up with Jarzinho versus Gane. That's that's the hor your horse that's running this weekend, right? Uh, yep, are you yep. coaching anybody else, or just one fighter this weekend? Um, you know, I, like put it, put it much like this. Like I'm I'm here for Jarzinho, but anybody that's here for American Top Team, they need me. I'm here to help them. So like mm -hmm. you know, it's a team effort. It's a team effort. So I'm here for American Top Team for the most part, not just Jersey. I'm here for American Top Team. So it could be Pedro Munoz. If Pedro needed his fingernails clipped, and I was there and I had fingernail clippers, I clip them. You know what I'm saying? Like whatever you need, I'm here to help you. I want to I want to see you attain your goals and, and and live out your live out your dreams. Toenails too, or just fingernails? Man, just fingernails. Cause toenails, man, I can't look. <laughs> okay. Biggie boy. Biggie boy has some of the crustiest feet, man. And just from seeing that, I know I can't touch. I can't touch toes. I, I don't like touching my own toes. I always show them to you, but I got corns. I got bunions. Man, my feet are ugly. I got judo feet. So there's a there's, <laughs> there's a chance see. there's a chance you when that, that that you got the best of the bees then after they were done with your feet. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure because I see some bees, bro. I see no. It looks like bees. Those bees, bees going away. Going. <laughs> hey, oh, man. the bee trailer tears. They stung my feet and died a painful death. <laughs> hey, when they stung your feet, they swell up? Yeah, they swelled up and died. <laughs> they got COVID. Hey, one, one more, Mo. One more. That guy, we, we can't pronounce his name. We're calling him D-Yags. The guy that's fighting Corey Anderson. Who yeah, do you think yeah. wins that fight? Okay, I think he's from Turkmenistan or Kyrgyzstan, right? Something like that, yeah. Or Tajikistan, yeah. I'm pretty sure, like, Corey, look, Corey ain't no joke. Look, Corey can box, he can wrestle, he can do it all. Um, Corey's going to be hard to beat, man. Um, I, I got Corey in that one. Um, okay. 
I, I, look, I, I'm a big. I, I, I really rock with Corey. I like, I like, I like his fighting style. I think the the fact Corey Anderson is a dark horse. Granted, like a lot of the fights he's lost in the past, he's lost because he's had little mental errors. Like he'd be winning the fight and all of a sudden get caught with something. But man, like he's coming to his own. Like I see it a little different, Corey. Man, he seems more confident, more outgoing, more you know, just he seems hungrier. You know what I'm saying? I like that. Now I can't wait yeah. for him to fight. All right, so I got you down for you were just leaning towards Davis. Um, it seems like you're leaning towards Corey, you're leaning towards Bader, and then with Romero and Johnson, you said the fans win, and that's fair. That's gonna and, be and, and so with, Nim, with, with Nimkov and Davis. I just don't know. I just know I'm I I I, I, I lean to Davis. I, Davis, I know my father, but at the same time, it's hard to go against the champ, man. Because I've watched him, I've watched Nimkov grow as a fighter. I watched him gas out versus Yuri Prochaska after his kill, smashing Yuri, and I've watched him just just slowly mature and. Just become more and more confident. Him yeah. and the Tokov. Tokov is another 185 pounder people are sleeping on. Anatoly Tokov. He's a beast. He's another guy. 170. You're a Slav a Masov. You're a Slav. Look, you're, I'm telling you. We, we, John, Dalton Rasta, Johnny Eblen, um, Austin Vanderford. At ATT, I think that we have the best, the best women's program. And I think from, I think we're the best MMA, 135 and up. We have, well, I'm, 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 I put my team against any other team out there, hands down. Yeah, your team's been on fire. I got to give it up, man. All right. Well, look, this has been a fun chat. I made my notes. And then after the first round, maybe we'll, we'll go more into prediction mode yeah. when they're down to four. Right now, they're in eight. Um, I figured you would have uh, some insight here because that was your division for a long time. But now you're retired coaching. You got Jarzinho Rosenstruck versus Cyril Gane. Um, I, I imagine your prediction is that your boy's gonna win. You think he gets it done early or late? We can do it either way. Cyril Gane is a he's uh, I, I like I like I like how he fights. Um, uh, he's tricky, long, long, length, he has good kicks, he, he's well rounded. I could tell he's been doing MMA for a while. They say he's been doing kickboxing, he's a kickboxing world champion, but uh, you know, you can't hustle me. How are you learning heel hooks? How you got a heel hook finish and you're a kickboxer champion? So I feel I feel like he's probably dabbled in MMA a little longer than what what we what we lead, what we led on to believe. So I think that he's been training for this moment, um, Gane. I think that he thinks this moment is, is now, but we're gonna stop his moment. He's gonna run to a brick wall, and he's gonna prove and come back and see us for the belt later. That's what's gonna happen. Yeah. All right, man. Thanks for the time. Uh, stay right. sane in that hotel, and uh, <laughs> we'll catch up soon. All right, man. Y'all take it easy. <laughs>